Hello, I am live. Well, this is going to be the first of my create a knitted sock challenge. And I just made myself a pair of socks to refresh myself. It's been a little while. I have made some socks with this pattern. I made several pairs and I have some friends that in a Facebook group that we're all going to make these socks together everybody's different levels and I wanted to go ahead and put these lessons on YouTube as well so that they can be there and maybe this can help someone else. Now I am not a professional sock knitter. I'm just your average, you know, regular person that loves to knit. And but I would like to show some of my friends. I also am a teacher. As you can tell from my channel, I teach math. And right now I'm working at a Christian school. I've also done some teaching online and I really love teaching and I love <clears throat> teaching math, but I also want to teach some knitting. And I have some students at my school that also want to learn knitting and they want to do socks as well. So I don't know how long it's going to take. It's going to take different people, a different length of time, I imagine, depending on your skill level at this time. So I'm going to use this pattern that a friend of mine gave me. It's basic socks, and I'm going to adapt it a little bit. And the first thing I want to share is the materials that you might need. Now, if you have knit socks before, then that's great. <laughs> so the pattern that I have calls for double pointed needles, and a lot of people I know love double pointed needles. I happened to just learn and I did these socks using this wonderful nine inch circular needle. And this is from Chow Gu. I think I have the package right here. And if you go online, you will see that a lot of knitters love these needles. The only one I have of this brand is the nine inch and I love it. So I will post below a list of materials that you can uh, click on and check it out on Amazon. You can get these, I'm sure, other places as well. But I have an Amazon link that I can give to you. And these are nine inches, but they are two size two, which is 2.75, I believe, millimeters. And they... I love them. I've done double pointed. I've done magic loop uh, socks. I've done toe up magic loop two at a time socks. And I really prefer this method. And this is a simple sock. Now, if you would like a higher, like say you want a uh, knee length type sock, you might need to do some measuring on your, you know, your calf and kind of do some planning as to how many stitches you're going to cast on. The pattern that I have right here, if you would like it, I can send it to you for free. Just give me your email address and I'll send it to you. Um, this was given to me from a friend. I'm not even sure exactly where she got this pattern from, like probably a magazine or something. It's a basic sock method. And I've watched YouTube, a lot of different socks, and there are other methods, but this is a really good basic one that I've done many times. And my friend who's a great knitter uses this method all the time. If you have special needs, then there are ways that you can adapt to what type of sock you want. So I would say like for me, if I was going to make this longer, I would just make this part longer. But depending on the size of your calf, you might want to make it, I was thinking make a few rows of the ribbing maybe a few inches and then do regular knitting down here, like a stockinette stitch until you get to the ankle and then do the, um, the heel here. Um, so if you want some help with that, just message me and we can do some brainstorming on that. But this is the basic sock. These are going to be for myself and these fit like a fitted sock. It's actually a little bit smaller than the foot. So that when you put it on, it just stretches just a tiny bit and it forms to your foot. I've seen some socks that are bigger than your foot. You know, just think about what kind of socks that you would like. Now, I also wanted to show you that if you 
have needles and you don't know what size they are, you could get one of these. This is a really old needle, uh, I don't know what you call it, needle gauge stitch measure ruler. So you can measure your gauge with it right here. You can also, you can knit stuff and then you put this on here and it helps you to measure your gauge. But you also can put your needles in these holes and it will tell you the size of your needles. And that really comes in handy. I would totally recommend getting one of these. So some of the materials that you are going to need, I have listed below. Um, I would recommend a set of four double pointed needles, size two, because you will need more than just a circular needle for the heel. Okay. I found that I couldn't just do the whole sock with this. I needed extra tools. So I would recommend those and the nine inch circular. I did watch some YouTube videos and some of the reputable knitters on YouTube recommended Chow Goo. So I just went ahead and got that. It cost a few dollars, but it worked like a charm. Um, stitch markers. And if you don't have stitch markers, you can actually make them with yarn. You can just take a piece of yarn and make a loop and tie it. Or you could even use, you know, those little tiny elastics that they use for a kid's hair. The, the really tiny ones, you could even use those for stitch markers. So there are other things that you could use. You don't absolutely need a stitch marker. But I did find that today when I was working on my sock, I was just about finished. And I realized I dropped a stitch right on the toe. And I wasn't going to take anything out. What I did was I just put my stitch marker in it. And the nice thing about this is it's like a little safety pin. So you can put it into the stitch and you can close it up and then you can hold it there until you're ready to fix that stitch. And mine was at the toe. So I just did finished up what I was doing and I went back. And when I had to hide the end of my, cause I was right at the end, I just took my darning needle and I just went right through that stitch to save it. So I didn't lose a stitch and everything's good. So that was a, a great use for the stitch marker. And you wouldn't be able to do that with an elastic. But if I didn't have a stitch marker, you might just stick like a needle through it, like one of the double pointed needles or something like that, just to hold the spot. You could also hold the spot with a piece of yarn. So there are other options, but that was really came in handy just today. Okay, so other things that you might need would be a tapestry needle and you can buy these also on Amazon. You can, I like to buy a large set of them because I tend to lose them. So, and sometimes when you buy the knitting needles online, um, in Amazon, they might come with some tapestry needles in there, but here's, um, a tapestry needle. That's kind of what it looks like. You might want a smaller one for finger weight yarn. Of course, you're going to need some yarn, okay? So I love this stuff. It's called Washable Wool. This brand is Croy. There's also oh, Patton's Croy Socks. Uh, there are other companies that make it. This is 75% uh, wool, 25% nylon. And it's called washable wool. You can wash these. They're very durable. And it this is a size one. And that means that it's finger weight yarn. That's the kind of yarn that you want to make socks. Okay. And you can make socks with thicker yarn, but this is what I would recommend. I don't know. That's what I always make my socks out of because that's what I was told to do. But I know I one time I did make a pair of socks out of a little thicker yarn because I knew the person was would use them for like winter wear and things like that. And these actually these socks are good for winter or spring like they're breathable and they're also something that is very warm. Now, my goal for my sock knitting is I would like to teach my friends, but I also want to get so good at it 
that it's second nature for me. I want to be really good at making socks that I can make a pair of socks really quickly. And of course, you might need some scissors. Okay. Now, I have found one woman's sock from this yarn. One, one ball is one sock. Um, if you're making larger socks, you might need one and a half balls, like for men's socks. Um, I had this much left over, but I think next time I might make mine just a tad larger. So I might, when I've done this before, I don't know, maybe for my husband, I did use just one ball of yarn. So for myself, I had this much left over and I just saw that, you know, some people just save all these little scraps and someday you can put them together in a scrap sock, like just a sock that's made with scraps. That would be fun. I never thought of doing that. I'm looking forward to making these. I love the colors in this one. You can order these on Amazon. You can also buy them um, at Michael's. I just went to Walmart in our area. I did not see any of these socks, but we do have a a uh, department store in our town and they have these socks. These are probably, I don't remember now, $10 per skein. I'm not exactly sure. Somewhere around there. So they're not cheap to make, but they are, they last a long time and they're great. I made, I made these for myself. I'm going to make another pair for myself. And um, you can also make these. I have not made them yet. But I would like to make some of the ankles tight. You could just make a short ribbing, then start with the heel, and then make the the um, the foot. That's also an option. Just just do the ankle style. On this pattern, I'm doing version one, and I'm going to cast on. This one says 56. That would be like a standard woman's size. If you feel like you need a bigger size, you can add on more, but you do want a multiple of four. Okay. So because you're going to do knit to purl to, and you're going to be doing that for a few inches, you might also even want a <laughs> tape measure. Tape measures come in handy. I don't always use them. I kind of forget that I can use a tape measure. So my ribbing is about five and three fourths inches long. My foot from heel to toe is about eight inches long. So, and I wear about a size eight. And I will tell you, these are not perfect. <laughs> Just so you know, but they're socks. They're going to be on my feet, right? Okay. So. The first thing we want to figure out is how we are going to cast on. We're going to cast on the socks. Now, I, this is my first roll. You can either get your end from the center. That's what professional knitters do. But that sometimes doesn't work for me because then I end up with um, problems. I get knots in it. So I'm just going to use the outside. And if you use the center uh end it's supposed to come out and you're not supposed to have any like <laughs> knots or anything like that but it doesn't work for me and if you take it from the outside you're gonna have to keep pulling it and maybe put it in a yarn bowl i love those i don't have one like a ceramic bowl with a little notch in it now what you want to do is you, you want to make this and I do the long tail cast on. Okay, so I make this, I'm going to make this a little longer than I need to. Because the worst thing is with the long tail cast on is if you don't have enough uh, yarn that you saved. This other piece is going to kind of get knit onto your needle. You're going to make a slip knot. And you're going to put it on your needle. Now, if you don't want to do it onto the nine inch to start with, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I also have long, this is a, uh, what do you call it? I don't know how many inches, 40 inches maybe, uh, circular needles, and these are bamboo. You could use something like this and cast on to start with. 
Um, my, now I use the long tail cast on, which means you're going to do a slip knot and then you are going to take your fingers and kind of go inside the two strands of yarn, like point down and then point up. Okay. So now I have like a triangle and then I'm going to go, I have over over and I'm kind of knitting a stitch and that's one and then two. Now, if you don't know how to do the long tail cast on, which can take a little bit of practice, but it is quick and I like it because if you do any other method, this one's like you're almost knitting the first row. So you're knitting the first row and then you just, it's a little easier because if you do the other easier method that beginners use, your first row is kind of like a line and it's a little harder to manage. So for a long tail cast on, you go inside with your two fingers like this, pull it down, and then you go take it from where the thumb is and then over by the finger and you're like knitting the first row and you want 56 stitches. Now, someone asked in the group how I'm going to start knitting. What you're going to do is you're just going to bring your needles together. And what are you going to do? You're going to just start knitting. And what I did was I put like a stitch marker in the middle if you want. Um, if you don't want to do a stitch marker, you can kind of tell where you started because you're going to have a end. You're going to have an end on the bottom. This is going to be like, we're starting from the top of the sock where the ribbing is, and you're going to have this tail on the bottom. So you're going to be able to tell basically where you started. Now, I would also recommend if you get tired of counting, because we're going to go all the way up to 56, that you could put a stitch marker at 20. Put a stitch marker at 20 more, and then put a stitch marker at the, you know, figure out where you are so you don't have to keep counting from the very beginning. The stitch markers are very helpful, and I never really used to use them until someone recommended them to me. So this is called the long tail cast on. Now there are other methods. Another method you could use is, I'll just use a different thing of yarn here. And I'll use my circular needle here. You're still gonna start with a slip knot. And if you try this method, what you wanna do is you wanna just knit your first row. And then you can start on your ribbing. So you're going to just like cast on and then knit your first row. So another method you can do is you're just going to put it over your thumb like this and then loop it onto the needle. So that's one, two, three. And you want to be careful not to pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight, um, it's not going to go up and down your needle carefully. Now. I got these needles not too long ago, like just recently, and I have never had a problem with bamboo needles before, but there's a little sliver on the top of this one. So it's a little bit annoying if I try to knit with it. So I might get like a piece of sandpaper and try to sand it down, or it might just not be any good. But I paid these circular needles with the tubing like this, I paid like $15 for a whole set. So they're very inexpensive. And I never had a problem with slivering before. So, um, but I have a few other sets as well. So I really like the chow goo. So I think I will keep my eye on even maybe getting a whole set of those. I don't know. We'll see. I have a lot of knitting needles right now. I don't really need anything else. But it does get expensive if you try to buy one set of needles for every project that you're going to do. So that's how I would do the cast on if I'm brand new to casting on. 
So I'm going to finish. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So I think what I'm going to do right now is put a stitch marker. I don't even know if it's going to stay there because <laughs> my stitches are so tiny. It's probably just going to fall. It's probably just going to fall. I guess I can just put it through the stitch itself so it won't fall off because I don't want to have to keep counting. So that's 40. Now, there are lots of different things, little tricks and tips that you can do. 41, 42, 43. One thing I would suggest is make sure that you don't split the stitches. That's really annoying with the really small needles and small yarn. So that's 40. Okay, that's 50, and I am doing 56. One, two, three, four, five. Now, some people um, like reinforce the last stitch by doing an extra stitch and knitting two together. You could do that if you want. I now have 56. I'm taking out the stitch marker. I'm not going to worry about um, where I started because I can tell, like I said, that piece. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that all of the stitches are facing down so that you're not going to twist. That's the first, the first row, you don't want to twist anything. Okay. So you're going to put your working hand has the yarn connected to the ball and your other hand is going to have no yarn at all right now make sure that we have i'm going to actually just make sure it's all facing the right way the same way okay gets a little tricky to starting is the like hardest part i think okay so you make sure you have your yarn connected to the ball not the end all right and you're going to just start with your rib stitch. So I'm going to knit two. Okay, one, two. I'm going to knit a purl two. So you're going to bring the yarn forward. One, two. And I'll tell you the first row is usually the hardest. Sometimes I have to start over. One, two. I have to say, though, I believe that working with the nine inch circular is so much easier than trying to do the double pointed needles at this stage. But, you know, to each his own. <laughs> so I can tell I just did the knitting stitch and I'm ready for the purl stitch by where the yarn is. If it's in the back, I just knit it. If it's in the front, I just purled. So like if you put it down and you pick it back up and you wonder, where am I? Now you're going to be able to tell the ribbing stitch by um, what it looks like too once you get going. So, so I'm purling two. Okay, and I'm going to keep going all the way around. I am going to follow this pattern for at least five inches, maybe six inches. I may make these a little bigger. Now, if you want to make a bigger sock, you could cast on more stitches. If you want to make a smaller sock, cast on fewer stitches. But I'm just making a woman's, about a woman's size eight. You could use this for the children's size. 
just make the foot a little shorter. You're just going to like what we usually do is just measure the foot. And according to the pattern, you're going to work the foot until you're two inches before the end of the toe. And then you're going to start decreasing. Excuse me, decreasing. And that's all you're going to do to get started. Okay, so you have to pick your yarn. Now, if you are using just double pointed needles, then you're going to want to separate that 56 into three groups. Okay, so you're going to do, I think it's like 28, 14, and 14. Or you can just do separate into the three. And then when you start to do the heel, you're going to need one group of 28 and 14 and 14 when you start the heel. Okay. So you're going to just work around with the double pointed needles. You're going to do two needles at a time. And if that's your method, let me know. And I can do be more specific about that. Um, you can also do this with the magic loop with a long loop. And what you would do is you would just half the stitches and you would knit across one needle and then you would pull the tubing through and then you knit across the other needle. And I've made socks like that and I really like that. I've always liked that until I got a hold of the nine inch circulars. And this to me is a game changer. It really is. Makes it so much easier. I can put it down and pick it up. I know right where I am and it just makes so much more sense to me. I do like the circular. I do like the magic loop method though, because I like just going across the stitches and I don't mind pulling the tubing through, but doing it this way really saves you time. My goal, as I said, is to get faster making socks. Okay. So now I got to a stitch that is not on very correctly. So I'm going to have to work to fix that. So, yeah. So it can be hard in the in with my world right now, I realize that my eyes aren't quite as good as they used to be. So I have to be careful about splitting stitches. I have to be careful about when I'm fixing something to be really I actually have um what you call progressives and I don't usually use them for close up but I realized hey maybe these do work close up so I am going to grab this stitch somehow it got twisted or something okay so every stitch is special right every stitch is counts and with knitting I have a friend that made something and she had to keep taking it out and that is an option. Sometimes you have to take things out. That is called frogging. You completely have to frog the project. But sometimes there are ways that you can fix it. And it might not look as perfect as you had hoped. But, you know, there's some things that it's not, nobody's going to see it. You know, it's a song. So you want to do it as perfect as you can. And the more you knit, the more perfect it's going to, you're going to get at it. But if you do make a mistake, it's like, it's a sock, <laughs> you know, keep that in mind. Don't be too hard on yourself. So at the beginning, I think the hardest part is trying to make sure that the stitches are not um, twisted. That first row is going to be a little bit of a challenge. And throughout the journey of making your first sock, give yourself, you know, a pep talk. You're going to be learning something new. It's, you know, sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes you do have to take things out. But to be determined and when you're done, you're going to feel really good about yourself. You're going to be, you're going to feel like, Wow, I accomplished something. And it just amazes me when I go online too and I see how many people are knitting. 
it's just phenomenal to me. There's so many knitting podcasts, so many knitters out there. And it's just something that no matter what, you can go to a store and you can buy something for 20 bucks or you can spend 20 bucks on yarn or more and make it yourself. And it's just, there's something about making it yourself that is just so rewarding. Okay, so I am trying to figure out what I'm doing because I feel like I kind of twisted something. Okay, so I knitted two, purl two. Knit two more. I'm almost at the end of my first row. And if your setup row doesn't work out and you have to take it out and start over, it's okay. It's okay. Like, you know, it's not really that big of a problem to start over. It's going to be okay because, as a matter of fact, <laughs> It, it, my first row is like the first, the last two stitches didn't really turn out the greatest. So, um, yeah, so you might end up with a little space in between, but you then you just keep going. Or you take it out and start over. Now, if you have to start something over again, it's okay because... You, Remember, you're learning something. You're learning something new. So even if you take it out and start over, you have learned something along the way and you'll do better the next time, right? It's kind of like life. Life is, life is hard. You know, sometimes we have to start over. Sometimes we don't get things done as well as we had hoped, but we just keep going. We keep persevering and eventually we'll get it done. And sometimes we think that we've made mistakes, but other people just see the finished product like these socks. You know, I have made mistakes on these, but when I wear them, I'm not going to think about the mistakes. I'm just going to think about, I made these socks and they're beautiful and I love them. So I will tell you about some of the mistakes I made the when we go along we're going to knit the ribbing then we're going to knit a square for the heel then we're going to make some short rows and we're going to make a little half circle at the bottom where the heel actually goes now a friend of mine told me that she knits in a reinforcing type thread to reinforce the heel i'm going to check into that because that might be a good idea um, the other thing you could do is just kind of do a weaving in with another type of yarn and just kind of make it stronger because the heels can definitely wear through. Um, but then you're going to pick up stitches on the sides and then you're going to decrease. This is called the gusset right here. And usually the gusset has this neat little line right here that shows where you decreased. And I have on this sock, I have, it's very defined, but on this sock, I made a little mistake and my gusset, I kind of moved my stitches around. The gusset's still there, but you can't see the line. It kind of went down this way and then it goes down this way, but nobody's going to even see it. The other difficult part of the sock is the toe. And the toe is, the you have to do the stitch called the Kitchener stitch. And my toes don't match. They're not really that great, but they are done. <laughs> so I'm going to have to perfect the Kitchener stitch. It's kind of a, a weaving stitch. It's supposed to be th so that it looks like you can't even tell. you it, A grafting is what it's called. Grafting. So you can't tell that you sewed the, the top together. So they're not perfect, but I'm learning, right? <laughs> I'm learning and I can't wait to make these because I love the colors on these. I think I'm addicted to making socks. So thank you for watching and I look forward to coming back. I'm going to come back when I have the ribbing done and I will do um, talk about how we're going to set up for the heel. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day.